Hello and welcome to Old Testament 301 Foundations. In the Old Testament, uh, today we're up to module number 9. And in this module we're looking particularly at the whole subject of the covenant. The term covenant is a, a fascinating term as we work our way through the pages of the Old Testament. Perhaps one of the most foundational and overarching themes throughout all of the Old Testament is this whole concept of the covenant of God. It's a term which is repeated over 280 times throughout the Masoretic text of the Old Testament scriptures. And so we're going to want to begin in the first instance to try and understand the meaning of the word covenant. At its most basic level it would seem to us that the, the root of the word uh, simply means to bind where, where two entities are bound to one another in a, a permanent agreement and we will begin to look at the way in which God has chosen, in fact, to bind himself uh, to his people in a, a permanent bond of agreement. And so we'll go right back, we'll look at the Noahic covenant, that is the covenant that God established with Noah, uh, following on from the flood, a covenant in which God says he will never again destroy the earth by flood. Of course, as we move on into the New Testament, we find in Peter's writings, that Peter reminds us though that whilst God will never again destroy the world by flood, it is being reserved for a day in which he will destroy this world a second time and this time by fire. But moving on from that we will reflect upon God's gift of the sign of the covenant to Noah and that was the gift of the rainbow in the sky, the perpetual reminder not only to humanity but to God himself of the great covenant that he has established right back at that time. We'll then begin to move on further and we will look at the establishment of God's covenant with Abraham. The Abrahamic covenant, a covenant which God first initiates with Abraham back in Genesis 12. But it's a covenant which God begins to rehearse, not only to Abraham, but to his son Isaac and to his son Jacob. And we will begin to see the, the development and the implications of this covenant. We will see in one sense how this covenant goes beyond merely Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, but then will extend to the whole of the family line that comes through Jacob, the family of Israel. And we will see how God establishes his covenant with the nation of Israel, often referred to as the Mosaic Covenant because this covenant was established whilst Moses was the leader of God's people. It is sometimes also referred to as the Sinaitic Covenant because it was established with God's people during their time down at Mount Sinai. And so we'll look more particularly at the book of Deuteronomy, that book which forms the second giving of the law, the law being rehearsed now to a new generation who are about to go in to take possession of the promised land. And here again we will see that God reiterates the terms of his covenant, both in terms of blessings and of curses. Blessings for obedience, but curses in the case of disobedience and rebellion towards God. And then we'll take something of a digression we'll begin to look at how these covenants that God has established parallel so particularly with the other ancient Near Eastern covenant known as the Suzerain Vassal Covenant. And we will want to see some of the similarities and yet also some of the dissimilarities between these forms of covenant. We'll be asking the question, to what extent was God's covenant a unilateral covenant, that is a one-sided covenant, to what extent could it be regarded as a bilateral covenant? And so we're going to want to ask some deeper questions as we journey on through. We'll then continue to follow through the whole theme of the covenant as we see it unfolding with God's establishment of a covenant with King David, an eternal covenant as God described it, a covenant which would one day see someone coming through the line of David who would in fact be the great messianic king for which Israel had so longed and hoped. We will also look at the book of Jeremiah, where in Jeremiah 31, God reminds his people that there is coming a day when he will establish a new covenant, a new covenant which will be, as it were, etched and engraved upon the hearts of God's people. This new covenant, which the Lord Jesus himself declared that he had come to bring, even in that last supper meal, as Jesus declared, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Well, I trust that as we contemplate this whole theme of the covenant, that you will find your heart uh, wonderfully warmed by the fact that we have engaged with such a God who has reached out to us in covenant love, offering himself, offering all of the blessings of heaven as we surrender to his great, wonderful lordship and authority. May God bless you richly.